Hello, and welcome to book report number two, where I'm going to be talking about Working, which is not a book by Studs Terkel exactly. It's a giant collection of interviews. And in fact, the full subtitle is People Talk About What They Do All Day and How They Feel About What They Do. So you can probably get a sense from that already that the tone of the book is pretty practical, straightforward. Obviously, the vast, vast majority is transcriptions of interviews with different people around the United States. I'm sure that a lot of those interviews were heavily edited, but even so, most of it is just as naturalistic as possible. It's sort of documentary equivalent in book form. Studs Terkel did a number of these kinds of books on different uh, broad subjects. He was apparently originally a radio play performer. <laughs> and found his way into this line of work. He was very famous uh, for many of these books. And despite the fact that working is quite famous, I had never heard of it until one day I happened to come across it in Counterpoint Books, a bookstore in LA that I, that I like quite a bit. And the premise hooked me right away. However, one of the most surprising parts of my experience with reading working is that it turns out this was originally released in the early 70s. I think there are two different copyrights. It's for 1972 and 1974, I think. The edition I have here obviously isn't from the 70s. This was printed, I think, in the early 2000s. It didn't give me an exact date. I also wanted to note the publishing company, which is the New Press. I'm not familiar with them, but they do have a note on the copyright page that says that they were established in 1990 as a not-for-profit alternative to the large commercial publishing houses currently dominating the book industry, and that they operate in the public interest rather than for private gain. Very nice. I love to see that. I've come across a couple uh, publishing labels that have a similar mission statement, but I just wanted to point it out here because I'm fully in support of sharing this book around. It's, it's one of the big reasons I wanted to talk about it on the channel. Besides that, I just enjoyed this book more than most other things that I have read in recent memory. And I, I want to make that very clear because it's, it's long. This book is a brick. Uh, this edition I have here is just under 600 pages long. In addition to uh, a good number, there's a preface, uh, an introduction by Studs Terkel himself, which I thought was very good. And a couple like prologue sections it's it's a little bit strange in that way but none of the stuff here felt superfluous to me which is pretty darn impressive because this is a massive amount of content it's a massive amount of reading to have at your fingertips and i was shocked at how easily it all went down the idea of picking this book back up and getting back into reading it. It never felt intimidating to me. I, I read it pretty quickly. I don't know, maybe a couple weeks, maybe three weeks or so. Pretty fast for me for a book of this size. It's not dense. It's not ever really all that boring. And I think one of the, the biggest benefits to readability is how short the sections tend to be. Basically, you just have one interview at a time and then you move on to the next one, which will be with someone completely different. Those are grouped into major sections on a kind of weird selection of specific topics, but it just goes by very easily. It's great to pick up. It's great to read just for a few minutes at a time. And it's also something where you can get really invested in a specific person's kind of voice and personality. So you just want to see what else they have to say. You, you just want to keep reading. I think that's wonderful for a book that's this long. And in general, if I haven't already gotten this across, I absolutely recommend it. I think this is a pretty important book, maybe important in quotation marks. It very clearly drills into a pretty big subject and a subject that I think I've been happy to see that more people seem to be discussing the concept of work in a very theoretical sense and sort of questioning our current relationship with work and even the rise of remote work during uh, quarantine and just the idea of, you know what, maybe we don't want to be spending almost the majority of our, our waking hours doing some awful job that we don't care about that doesn't actually help people. It's a very big topic, and I have seen, even just here on YouTube, I have seen a number of people trying to get into that topic from different angles. I appreciate all of that discussion happening around this right now. In fact, I wanted to make a video <laughs> sort of about work and specifically tech startup environments and tie it into the game Going Under, which I think does a great job of hitting on that subject matter. Don't know whether I will. I've, I've put it off a couple different times, but here 
here. In the meantime, we have working. One of the reasons why I said I was surprised to hear that it actually was released in the 70s is that so many of the conversations and so many of the perspectives that you come across in this book, a lot of these are the same, basically the same conversations that we're having about work today. Like, I don't think, in a very general sense, I don't think that we have advanced the conversation very much. I think for the most part we've been asking similar questions for quite a while, or at least this book would seem to imply that. I also think that it's a kind of interesting look into American life. Obviously it's not fully representative, right? It's not a huge sample size of people. I'm sure there was a lot of bias that came into uh, choosing these people. It's not an anthropological text, ultimately, maybe a sociological text potentially. But not only is a time capsule of, oh, these were the professions and, and jobs that were big at the time, these were the ones that were on the way out, these were when these are uh, certain positions where people were really struggling at the time, here's what we thought about unions, there's all that, but also just, yeah, American life in a sense too. I, I think it's a, a very interesting way to engage with a culture, is to just hear people living in that culture talking about it and talking about their own experiences. It's wonderful. You also never really get specific information about each interviewee. You get their occupation, which sort of defines their presence in the book, which makes sense given the subject matter. And then you have just whatever they happen to mention in their own interview. It's not like every single person gets age, where they live, or ethnicity, gender, anything like that. You just pick that up yourself. Sometimes you don't, and I almost like it better when it stays really vague. And I think that's more or less everything I wanted to touch on here in this very brief look at the book. It's dirt cheap. If you want to buy it, you could probably get it for five bucks. If you find it at a Goodwill, it might be a dollar. And I also wanted to mention some other books that touch on similar topics or that I think are related in some way. So we have, uh, for one, uh, you know, more discussion on nature of work, things like that. We have Georg Lukács. I think it's Lukács. I'm really struggling with that one. History and Class Consciousness. This is kind of a classic Marxist, post-Marxist text. This edition I have here is awful, <laughs> but otherwise the content is quite good if you can find a solid translation. I also wanted to bring up A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius, which is still one of my favorite books of all time. Some college friends might make fun of me for that, but I'm bringing it up here because it's a memoir, so it obviously involves the author drawing from personal experiences and finding ways to represent people from their actual life in that book, as well as in Studs Terkel's intro to working, there's questioning of sort of almost the, the ethics of nonfiction writing or memoir writing, or just any instance where you're kind of using people and their real experiences for personal gain, even if that's not the primary goal. You are, in the end, benefiting personally <laughs> from telling other people's stories, and you don't feel like you're giving too much back to them. I think it's an interesting topic, and yeah, Eggers brings it up here as well. And the last sort of see also book that I wanted to talk about here is a Manifesto. Totally deserves its own video. It's another one that I could talk about for quite a while. I won't say much else about it here except that yes, it's probably nonfiction as far as we know, or at least largely nonfiction, and it definitely grapples with the concept of work overall and you know, individual relationships with work and how it shapes your life. But I think that's about it. Thank you so much much for joining me. Otherwise, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by.